Hello, everybody, and very welcome to this Let's Build session. We hope you've had great Dev Day so far. Over the last few days, we all have already heard many exciting lectures from the status of fire in different countries to its various applications. Many topics were covered. This session is focusing on querying medical device data for clinical and workflow applications. Let's start with a quick introduction. Hello again from my side. My name is Katrin Riech and I'm a research associate at the University of Lübeck. My main research interest is medical device interoperability and I've developed a point of care device implementation guide for mapping medical device data from IEEE 11073-10207 HL7 fire. Thank you, Katrin. I'm Tobias Wilde. I have been working as a tech consultant for about five years, and I'm currently with Unity, a German-based consultancy, and I work for the Zurich-based branch in Switzerland. We're helping organizations to become data-driven and making the most of technology. Personally, I'm, I'm focusing mostly on pharma and meta clients, where we are helping them with various data aspects from modeling IT strategies to the development of data architectures and to the application of AI models and algorithms. Some of you might have attended yesterday's session called um, Enabling Health Device Data Driven Applications from our colleague Stefan Schlichting. Over the past few months, I've been involved with the development of a digital health solution where we used FHIR mainly to conceptualize an interface to hospital information systems and build the respective resources and profiles for. Next slide, please. In today's session, we demonstrate with various queries how medical devices are connected and exchange data with FHIR URLs. We show a few different queries based on realistic example data. We cover various device data related topics along a fictional clinical storyline. For the medical people in the audience, we aim for keeping things as realistic as possible, but also as simple as possible. We are focusing on the device connection and data from measurements, pulse and body temperature data in particular, the development of blood pressure data records, the calibration date of devices and the connection history of devices. For all this, we use a happy server to store our data and access it via SOAP UI, as you will see in a minute. Some of you may have listened to Stefan Schlichting's uh, talk yesterday. Stefan explained the use of data from both medical and personal health devices and explained how device information is presented in FHIR. We will not go too deep into details at this point, but I think some information is useful to follow the next queries. So in 11073 SDC, the device information is organized hierarchically in four layers. The uppermost level is the object-oriented abstraction of a point of care device. This is the medical device system, followed by the virtual medical device on the next level, which represents the abstraction of a medical subsystem. The channel allows um, us to group um, to make logical groupings of metrics for hierarchical information organization. And these three levels are all um, modeled as device resources in FHIR. And um, a metric describes properties of a measurement. Metrics are represented in FHIR as a device metric resource and the specific measurement values are stored in the observation resources, which refer to the device metric. For today's present presentation, we assume a simplified model. It's only important to know that the observation resource points to the device metric resource via the device reference and the device metric resource 
points to the device resource via a parent reference. And the observation is also um, can also refer to the um, patient via a subject reference. Thank you very much, Katrin. Let's imagine now we're at the hospital. There's a new admission of our patient. We name her Pauline. Poor Pauline suffers from tachycardia and strong fever and the doctors have just changed shift and the doctor Carla is about to start her shift. She wants to get an overview of the condition of Pauline. In the background, data is being exchanged between various connected devices. Dr. Carla wants to dig a bit deeper, and for that, we want to see which measurement data of our patient Pauline is available from the connected devices. Here you can see uh, the SOAP UI interface we are using to perform our queries. The advantage of the SOAP UI is that you can save your queries but you don't need uh, a SOAP UI. When you're working, for example, with a Happy Fire server, you can as well use uh, the Happy Fire client. At the beginning, when we want to start a query, we need to choose a REST method. In our use cases, we want to retrieve data, so we're using the GET method. Afterwards, we need to specify the endpoint of our server and the fire resource on which we want to perform our queries. Here, for example, the observation resource. And finally, at the end, we can specify our search parameters. And these four fields together are building the query. In our first query, as Tobias mentioned, we want to know which measurements are currently available for our patient. To retrieve this data, we are using the fire observation resource. And first, we're going to specify for which patient we want to know something about the measurement. The resource of our patient Paulina has the ID5. So the subject reference should equal the value 5. So the attributes and search parameters will be added in the name column and the values they should equal to in the value column. In this query, we are interested in the code and the device attribute, and we can specify with underscore elements that only these attributes should be shown in the output. With the green arrow, we can start our query. And the output is shown in JSON. You can see here that in total, 12 resources that match our specifications could be found. And we can see here that there are several body temperature measurements which have um, a reference to a device metric resource with the ID 22. And uh, if we want to know which device is connected to our patient, we need to search for the source or the parent reference from the device metric resource with the ID 22. And besides the body temperature measurements, there as well some blood pressure measurements available for our patient, Paulina. Thank you very much, Catherine, for the first query. And from um, all the measurement data we have available, Dr. Carla is especially interested and curious about the pulse and body temperature data. So we go right back into SOAP UI. To display the latest temperature measurements, we first filter again for our patient with the resource ID5. And afterwards, we can specify the LOINC code. 
for the temperature measurement. And as well, we are specifying again with underscore elements, which attributes we want to see in our output. Because we want to see the recent results, we're going to sort the date. This um, can be done with underscore sort. And we want the recent results, so we're sorting the date in a descending order. And this is done by this minus. We only want to see the latest two results, so we can specify with underscore count how many outputs should be shown. And as you can hear, in total, there would be six resources that match our specifications, but only two of them will be shown. And as you can see here, the actual body temperature measurement of our patient lies at 42.1 degrees. And this is really, really high. So let's all hope for our patient that this isn't true. Otherwise, she would be really sick and Let's hope that this is only a measurement error. Only one hour before the body temperature laid at 37.9 degrees. And for the blood pressure measurements, we have a very similar query. We just um, modify the loin code and adjust it to the blood pressure measurements. We specify that in this case, we only want to see one result. And in the elements here, it is important that we show the component attribute. And this is specified in the vital signs profiles that um, the blood pressure has a systolic and diastolic value. And these uh, can be shown in uh, several components. And as we can see here, our systolic blood pressure value lays at 95 mmHg, which can be interpreted as low. Normally, it should be between 120 and 139. As well, our diastolic blood pressure value is low. It lays at 56 mmHg and should normally be between 80 and 89. Thank you very much, Kathleen. We are getting to know Pauline better and better, but since she's not doing very well, we still have to dig a bit deeper. So Dr. Carla needs to know how her blood pressure has developed over the past 24 hours. If you want to know the blood pressure measurements of the last hours. We simply use the query before. We just omit the restriction that count equals one in the query. So it is possible to see the cause of the measured values. And they're all displayed here in the output panel. And when we're scrolling through them, we can see that the blood pressure values are decreasing over time for our patient. Thank you very much. I just saw a question popped up. We'll cover that in the later Q&A section. Um, it actually does not look very good for our Pauline. The symptoms indicate the severe sepsis. And nevertheless, Carla registered an unusually high body temperature earlier and concludes there might be even an error with the measurement data or the device even needs to be recalibrated. To be sure and find out more about that, she wants to find out when the measurement device was last calibrated in the next query. The calibration information uh, can be found in the fire resource device metric. And this device metric must belong to the clinical thermometer as we have seen in our first query, the uh, body temperature 
um, measurements have been performed by the resource device metric with uh, the ID22. And we can see um, that the device metric belongs to the um, thermometer, which has the resource ID6. And in this case, we are only interested in uh, the type of the uh, device metric, the unit, and of course, the calibration. And as you can see in the output, the calibration has been performed late last, the last time the calibration was performed was about uh, 10 months ago. So um, maybe someone should check this. Pauline realizes the calibration should, or Carla realized the calibration should have happened three months ago. To ensure safe treatments for previously connected patients, we all know you haven't been to that hospital. She wants to check who else had been connected to the device in the past week. To find out uh, for which patients measurements with the thermometer have been performed lately, we want to find the observation resources performed with the uh, ID device, ID resource uh, 22. And the most interesting output here is the patient, um, so the uh, attribute subject. Since the thermometer is frequently used, it is not worthwhile to display all outputs. We can indicate that the date um, should be greater or equal to a certain value by using this GE before the date. Of course, you can use as well less, less or equal or um, other parameters. And as you can see in our output, it is not only our patient Pauline who was connected to this device in the uh, last weeks. There's um, as well a patient called Michael and a patient called Sarah. And then there are several um, resources from our patient Pauline. And if you have an idea how we can restrict this query that only unequal patients will be shown, then maybe you can send me a message. I'm really interested in that because here our patient Paulina um, is shown uh, more than once. Thank you very much, Kathleen. We've seen three patients were involved and Carla is better hurrying up to get their treatment up and running again. We wish them the best of luck from our side. This was our last query, and as a brief summary, we have listed here what was covered by the queries, and all queries are for sure included in the presentation slide deck provided to download in case you wish to have a further look, and maybe it was also a bit fast. Um, just to briefly summarize what we have showed you, um, We've showed you how device data can be queried, how filters can be applied based on different attributes and search criteria, how selected measurements can be displayed. And the fire resources we were using were device, device metric and observation as explained in the beginning in this object model. And we hope we have made you curious to try it out by yourself. And for that reason, we have linked um, the fire cheat sheet on this slide in the links below. It explains the oral query logic in a handy way. And I'm sure many of you probably already have it hung up above their beds. And the uh, second link we have had added pro, a second link we have added um, includes an introduction to Happy Server. And we can also heavily recommend having a look in the advanced search session of René Sprunk from Firely that took place yesterday. There he covers bit more advanced concept of URL based queries and searches. So we have already reached the end of our slides and are very keen to your questions and hope we can answer them all. There should be plenty of time. 
we have seen there um, were already some questions popping up. And this is Michael, the moderator, and I'd just like to say everybody's mute. You can unmute yourself if you have a question, so you don't have to enter them into the chat. Feel free to do so if you'd like. there aren't any urgent questions we can might continue with those that have been submitted virtually Michael can you might pass them to us yes so the first question is please provide us some highlights for devices meant for sports science and what are the extra parameters we should consider um, we are aware of the variables that are covered by, I think, the personal health device data resources in FHIR. And there, for sure, there are endless, syst um, endless different um, gadgets available making their way to the market. Yes, I think the uh, difference is that the personal health devices are modeled in a four layer hierarchy. So there we have uh, the device metric resources or observation resources uh, directly belonging to one device resource and not uh, four, which are divided into the medical device system, VMD channel and so on. And um, there was a similar question yesterday in the talk from Stefan Schlichting. And there I posted a link to a really interesting uh, paper where the topic of leveraging uh, fire for variables is uh, addressed. All right, very good, thank you. Next question, would you mind Oh, sorry, would you recommend SOAP UI over Postman for fire operation? I think that um, belongs to your personal um, your mind. <laughs> no, um, I think uh, if you're using Postman, then that's as well fine. So are there any differentiating features between the two that you know of? Maybe one has more features than the other? Uh, in my personal uh, opinion, I find it easier to uh, work with the search parameters in the SOAP UI editor. It's a bit easier for me to edit them, but I think this is going as well with uh, Postman. That's all the questions right now. Thank you very much. In, oh no, you first, Catherine. <laughs> um, if you're interested in the Devices on Fire Working Group and uh, all this stuff with the device data and fire is working, um, there will be an um, exciting uh, track at the Virtual HSM Fire Connector Fund in January. Um, given the current challenges with COVID-19 and the need for isolation ICU beds that include medical devices such as ventilators, physiologic monitors and infusion pumps. There's an acute need to advance the devices on fire specifications to support this isolation ICU bed use case. And uh, we hope to see someone of you there at the virtual connector phone. Are there any uh, further questions? Yeah, no further questions in the chat. Feel free to open your mic if you'd like. Okay, apparently there is yeah. another question. Sorry. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, Walter, do you mind? I don't see your question. That's the problem. So. 
Uh, you have to refresh the the. The question is: uh, Do you have any experience with uh, infusion pump uh, acquisition of data? I uh, no, not 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 for fire in uh, for for my side. I don't know to be as maybe you, but not actually uh, for infusion pumps. Personally, I haven't, but we can take that back to our work group and. If you could drop us an email, we could get back to you and hopefully provide you with a more advanced, more sophisticated answer to that. In case there are any other questions or even at a later point, we're happy to exchange thoughts via Hua or email. And we're also looking forward to connecting with you for the moment virtually and in the future, hopefully, as well in person. Thank you very much for your time and have a great rest of the dev days of the day and then a splendid weekend. <laughs>